I'm a 35 year professional fisherman. When I got into the fishery, we had very few fish. Uh, most of uh, the fishery had been collapsed. Uh, we had really no monitoring whatsoever. There was a lot of you know widespread cheating, poaching going on. Uh, you could spend all day long just trying to catch a handful of keeper fish back then. The fishery stocks in this country were being depleted year after year after year after year. It became a real struggle to try to make a living back in those days. Different story today. You know, many decades of hard work by a lot of fishermen uh, working together with uh, environmental groups, uh, folks at the National Marine Fishery Service and finding ways that would work and that we could uh, rebuild our fishery. And we've done that. You know, you couldn't do the job of really good management and the science community couldn't come together and help us manage our fisheries better if it wasn't for these technologies that have been developed and are on these boats currently. Having technology with EMER, electronic monitoring, electronic reporting, has given us the uh, ability to really gauge uh, from a scientific standpoint what's harvested, how quickly we harvest it, um, and, and the ability to have a, a real sustainable program to have fish for everybody moving forward for generations to come. Improved data and higher quality data, I think, are necessary to help us uh, bring about the changes that are necessary for sustainable management of marine resources and fisheries. And I think we're seeing uh, that happen before our very eyes because of the technologies that are, that are being employed, but also because I think of a, of a change in the way that many in the industry see the importance of data. We have always needed to know what is being caught, and to the extent possible, where and when, and the kind of fishing effort that is being used to harvest the stocks. But more and more, we need finer scale information so that we can better understand the dynamics of fish stocks, how those stocks are responding to climate change and other changes in marine ecosystems. So understanding where in space and time harvests occur, understanding what the water depth is and what the depth of where the fish are caught is helpful, temperature, salinity, the kind of data that we need, not just to manage our fish and fisheries, but to really understand what's going on in the ocean. And that becomes increasingly important in a world where climate change is affecting productivity and patterns of distribution of fish. I see the effect of climate change this morning. It's the middle of November. The tide should be about two foot lower. We get bigger bull tides that last longer in the year. It's windier during the summer months now when, when is our high time on the charter boat fleet side. Weather patterns are harder to predict. It's harder to, to make a living. Uh, I, I don't see us be able to manage our fisheries through climate change without the technologies that are available today that we put on our vessels and having the, build, the ability to report those landings every day. Fishermen are out on the water uh, all the time, and their eyes and ears are really important to scientists in terms of understanding what's going on out there. So the more we as scientists engage with fishermen and understand what it is that they're seeing, the more we have a dialogue with them and they understand us. And then together we can move forward to, to address the shared goals of sustainability. For me, the biggest reward of what I do is uh, going into a, a fish market or a restaurant and seeing some West Coast caught fish on the menu on the list there and knowing it's sustainable, it's good for me, and it's good for my community. To make good fishery regulations, we need good data and we collect it from a lot of different sources. We need near real-time information on fish stocks, fish abundance, fish distribution, where they are in the ocean, uh, on fisheries catch an effort on the location of protected species such as marine mammals uh, that we don't want to interact with as fisheries. And so we then are more comfortable allowing fisheries harvests 
to really come right up to that level, to take the full amount because we're comfortable that that is truly a sustainable level of fisheries harvest that can be continued into the long term. If we're uncertain about those results, if we don't have enough data or there's a lot of uncertainty in the data inputs that go into those stock assessment models, then we'll apply a larger buffer for that uncertainty to make sure we're being precautionary and data is going to make the difference between being able to operate successful fisheries and having to constrain or in some cases even close fisheries. Our at-sea whiting fisheries off the west coast are a great example of how data can help a fishery stay open and operate successfully. The at-sea whiting fisheries are managed under a cooperative structure where each sector uh, is, has some very coordinated data sharing among all vessels in the sector. They are communicating with each other on a daily basis on their rates of bycatch of species that they want to avoid. So where the bycatch hotspots to avoid are, where the whiting uh, are dense and clean and they can fish successfully for whiting without running into too much bycatch. Um, and that, that type of data and that almost real-time data sharing between the vessels allows the fleet themselves without regulatory action on a daily basis uh, to avoid the bycatch species, to stay under the regulatory bycatch limits and continue to operate successfully targeting whiting. My family came over on the Mayflower and us Cushmans have been fishing here off the northern Gulf of Maine ever since. If fishermen want better stock assessments, they've got to change the model. You can't just stop and, and complain about it. You have to do a change to make change. Everyone always argues about science and stock assessments in fisheries, that the stocks are doing better than what the scientists are saying. But we never give the scientists better tools to verify that. To me, I don't think that we give them the information that they need to give us more accurate stock assessments. I think with EM, it definitely can change that. Right now, EM, I think, is the future. The technology's getting better, and I think it's a better alternative than observer, human observers on the boat. If the fishermen are willing to adopt this, I think there'll be a better outcome in a more sustainable fishery by having accurate data. The data are the foundation of our ability to use these new computational methods that let us have even greater insights about the ocean. You can't have good AI, you can't have good computer vision or machine learning unless you have good data to feed into those models. So our ability to really make good decisions is predicated on our ability to get really good data to make those decisions. And there's amazing new technologies that are coming out in fisheries. We have video camera and sensor arrays running on boats now, generating images of fish, but we're still operating with data policies from the 70s in a modern data era. One of the biggest challenges we have with fisheries and ocean data in general right now is that we're all running on a lot of different standards. It's like being in a country and you don't know what the electrical voltage is, and so you just go to plug something in and maybe it gets fried. If we all had an agreement on how the standards were about how we collect our data, how we keep track of things like time and date and depths and numbers of fish, then it would be easier for the data to be pulled together for us to do the analyses we need to make better predictions and better decisions about the future of the ocean. And if we're able to make these changes to data standards, to making it so that all the data is speaking the same language, then it's going to be easier for us to open up the data that needs to be open, share the data that needs to get shared, and protect the privacy and confidentiality of the data that really needs to stay secret. In the US, it's often controlled by states as well as the feds. So everybody's setting their own rules, and that can make it much harder for you to pull the data up and use all the data together to make big decisions about an ocean that is ultimately much more connected than our data is right now. There's a lot of room for optimism, um, particularly in the U.S. We manage our fisheries sustainably. I'm optimistic in terms of uh, improved interactions between scientists and uh, the fishing community. I think over time, more and more, we both understand that our goals are the same. 
The great thing about all this is I see a better future for my children, for the young people coming into the fishery, and people that want to enjoy fresh seafood for generations to come. We do have the systems to collect the data we need. We are getting better every day at understanding what's going on in the ocean with our fish stocks and our fishery resources, and we'll be able to continue to provide sustainable fishing opportunities long into the future. To see that the whales and the seabirds and the other life of the ocean can be protected and get the food they need to keep being sustained, as well as those of us on land, where fish is an important component of the diets of people all around the world. So I want to see a world in which that kind of targeted precision fishery benefits the people who fish, as well as the rest of us, by being connected to the sea just right outside our doors. I mean, I want what everybody else wants. We want an ocean full of fish, and, and we want fishermen to be able to go to harvest it, and we want good prices, and we have the technology now to do it, and let's take advantage of it. Let's, let's, we have nothing to lose at this point, so why not, why not change?